Welcome to the Mathematical Olympiad course, the first course on YouTube that's going to cover everything there is to know about Mathematical Olympiads. Today we're going to be talking about the rearrangement inequality. Let's get rolling. Okay guys, so what does the rearrangement inequality even state? So rearrangement inequality states that whenever we have two sequences of positive real numbers, let's say A's and B's, such that our sequences are non-decreasing, but which means that A1 is gonna be less than or equal to A2, which is gonna be less than or equal to A3 and all the way up to A sub n. And also B1 is gonna be less than or equal to B2, which is gonna be less than or equal to B3, all the way up to B sub n. And then for those two sequences, what we're going to get is if we take those two sequences and we multiply uh, respective terms uh, from both of those and we add the resulting products together, which is going to be the sum a1 plus b1, uh, a1 times b1, a2 times b2 up to a n times b n, it's going to be greater than or equal to a1 times c1, a2 times c2 up to a n times c n, where c n is any permutation, any permutation of b1, b2 up to bn. Any permutation means those are going to be the same numbers, the same b1, b2 and bn. However, we're going to be changing the places. Yes, so we'll be just changing the order. We're going to kind of mix those numbers up. So um, now it's not true that those numbers are going to be nicely, <laughs> nicely laid up, nicely laid down in a non-decreasing order. Okay, and this thing is going to be greater than or equal to a1 multiplied by bn, yes, yeah? so the, uh, the smallest a multiplied by the biggest b plus a n times b n sub b sub n minus 1, and then all the way up to a sub n multiplied by b1, so the greatest a multiplied by the smallest b. And this is the rearrangement inequality. <sighs> I think it's like a really beautiful, miraculous inequality, but it is not miraculous, and I will show it to you guys by proving it. Okay, guys, so to prove the rearrangement inequality, what I would like to do is take myself a sequence of positive real numbers. Let's say I will call those numbers A. So A1 is gonna be less than or equal to A2 all the way up to AN. And all those numbers are gonna be positive real numbers. Yeah, so that's my non-decreasing sequence. And I would like to take myself another sequence. This time the sequence is gonna be called, or maybe I will do it in blue because why not? B1, B2, up to b n those are also gonna be positive real numbers but this time as you can see i'm not saying they are order in any kind of a way and those are well let's say just numbers are not ordered they're just positive real numbers is all we know about them yeah so now i would like to create myself a sum a sum i would like to denote as s well, not an integral but s and sum s is going to be equal to a1 multiplied by b1 plus a2 multiplied by b2 all the way up to a sub n multiplied by b sub n. Awesome. And now the trick. I would like to take myself, to take myself two b's from this sequence right here. Let's say br and bs. Such that r is going to be greater than s. That's pretty important here in this proof yeah so r gonna be oh sorry not r is gonna be greater than one r is gonna be greater than s yeah and take ourselves as br and bs and i would like to switch make them switch places in this sum right over here yes yeah? so as the first sum was equal to a1 b1 a2 b2 all the way up to a and bn which i can actually rewrite as s being equal to a1 b1 and then we're, we're going to be just summing stuff up until we get two now s was smaller than l a uh, than r what the hell so a s times b s and then we are going to be just summing stuff up again up to a R B R and then again up to A N B N. Yeah, so that was our original sum S. And now the sum will change into let's say the sum 
S prime, which is going to be equal to once again A1, B1, and then we're going to be just summing stuff up to um, A, S, B, R, yeah, because we switch places between B, S and B, R. And I'm going to be summing stuff uh, up once again. And that, that, that plus right here is not the most beautiful plus I've ever written. Yeah, here we have A, R, B, S, and then once again sum all the way up to A sub N, B sub N. Yeah, so we just switched, made B, R and B, S switch places in this sum and create another sum as prime. But now if we were to, let's say, subtract S prime from S, what would we get? I mean, what would we get? Well, this A1, B1 would cancel out, and actually everything would cancel out mm, up to AS, BS, and AS, BR. Yes, so what we would get here is AS, BS minus AS, BR. Then once again, everything would cancel out up to AR, BR, and AR, BS. So plus AR, BR minus AR, BS, and then once again, everything would cancel out up to a n sub b n and so what we get is that the difference between s and s prime is equal to a s b s minus a s b r plus a r b r minus a r b s yeah yeah i was right but this thing right here is actually pretty nicely i mean we could actually rewrite it pretty nicely as a r minus a s times b r minus b s but now we know that this AR minus AS is going to be always greater than or equal to zero because R is greater than S. And we know that those A's are non-decreasing, yeah? But now, well, we see one more pretty interesting thing. We know that R is greater than S, yeah, right over here. So if BR was greater than BS, yeah, so if br is greater than or maybe let's say greater than bs or maybe let's say okay br is greater than or equal to bs then s is greater than or equal to s prime because then if br was greater than bs this stuff would be positive or equal to zero and so the difference would be either zero or it would be a positive number which would mean that s prime is less than s yeah which is lovely because now we can just go on and do this thing for every single R and every single S there is until we we'll get that in order for this difference to be positive, so in order for S prime to be always less than S, we will have that B1 will be less than or equal to B2 will be less than or equal to all of the Bs up to B sub N. But if it if we have a sequence B1 up to Bn, such that the sequence is non-decreasing, and we also have another sequence A1 up to A sub n, which is another non-decreasing sequence, and we have that, well, whenever we switch places for um, A's and B's, uh, sorry, for some B's in the sequence, then the resulting new sequence will be smaller than the original sequence. Well, that's actually pretty interesting because this is exactly what the rearrangement inequality states. Huh, that's nice. So now, well, what you do is you just pretty much iterate and, you know, take in more and more pairs of those BSs and BRs and you end up with the conclusion that, BI, that B1 is going to be less than or equal to B2 all the way up to B sub N. And this is the proof of the rearrangement inequality. Now let's do some problems. Okay guys, so for the first problem, well, this is not gonna be really hard, but I'd just like to visualize you guys how to use this rearrangement inequality in problem solving. So, A, B, and C are positive real numbers, and we're supposed to prove that A squared plus B squared plus C squared is greater than or equal to A, B plus B, C plus C, A. There are several ways to do this one, for example, um, by the AMG inequality or just by completing the square, but well, it doesn't really matter because I want to show you guys the rearrangement inequality uh, approach for this problem. So we would like to assume vlog, which is without loss of generality, that A is greater than or equal to B, which is greater than or equal to C. Well, can I do it? Absolutely I can, because, well, those numbers are real numbers 
there is a number that is the greatest there and there is a, the smallest number. And even, even if A is not the greatest and C is not the smallest, I can just, well, call A C and call C A. There is no problem for me to just, you know, change those names because as you can see, this entire guy right here is symmetric. So there is no problem for me to just swap, uh, swap A with C here. Mm, it won't cause any trouble. Okay, well, this is nice because now I create myself a, a sequence positive real numbers that is non-decreasing yeah so from c to b to a yes i'm like this and i have well the exact rearranged inequality here in this original problem statement because a squared plus b squared plus c squared is just equal to a multiplied by a plus b multiplied by b plus c multiplied by c and well it is supposed to be greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus CA by the original problem statement. But well, we see that this, that we can just go on and treat this A right here and this A right there the same, this B and this B the same and this C and this C the same. And now it's pretty interesting because here we've got an A, here we've got a B, here we've got a B, here a C, here a C, here an A. And so we see that those green tilted mm, numbers on the right hand side are just a permutation of the green headed numbers on the left hand side. Okay, well, if they are just a permutation, then by the rearrangement inequality, the left hand side has to be greater than the, the left hand side has to be greater than the right hand side. Yeah? This, well, exactly the rearrangement inequality statement. And so this is the end of the problem. I really hope you guys, um, I, I really hope you guys see now <laughs> what it means to apply this guy into, um, problem solving on Olympus. Now let's move forward. Okay, okay, so from that easy problem straight to the IMO 1975. So we are supposed to let x1, x2 up to xn be a non-decreasing sequence of positive real numbers just as y1, y2 up to yn. And we're supposed to let z1, z2 up to zn be a permutation of yi's. This means that they are the, those are the same numbers but in a different order. And we're supposed to prove that x1 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus y2 squared all the way up to x and minus y and squared is less than or equal to x1 minus z1 squared plus x2 minus z2 squared all the way up to x and minus z n squared. Love it. So how are we supposed to solve this problem? Well, first of all, it would be a nice idea, I think, to go on and write out and multiply out those um, those parentheses expressions here because we can't really do anything with well, this form they are in right now. So let's try and do it. Well, what's going to be x1 minus y1 all squared? Well, there's going to be x1 squared minus double x1 y1 and then plus y1 one squared. What about this parenthesized expression right here, x2 plus x2 minus y2? Well, that's going to be x2 squared minus double x2 y2 and then plus y2 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 squared. And that's going to be all the way up to x n squared and then minus double x n y n plus y n squared. On the left hand side this inequality, however, on the right hand side is going to look something like this. It's going to be x n squared mm, minus double uh, minus double x1 z1 plus z1 squared and it's going to be all the way up to, oh, I should have put x1 here, what the, what the hell, x n squared minus double x <laughs> xn zn plus zn squared. I'm not really good with indexes, guys. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay, but now a nice thing would be to maybe write it in a little bit more convenient notation because this thing right here, it just looks awful, doesn't it? Mm, it's not really possible to do anything with that. So I'm thinking maybe we could like group 
similar terms into something that would look like a sigma notation or something like this. What do you think about that? Maybe we could group those y squared and x squared on both hand sides. And well, actually we can do it. We will end up at something like this. A sum from, let's say, i being equal to 1 up to n of x i squared. Then negative 2 sums from i being equal to 1 up to n of out of xi times yi and then plus a sequence from a series a sum from i equal to 1 up to n of yi squared and this sum is supposed to be less than or equal to because we can do the same thing here on the right hand side of this inequality getting the sum from i oh my god from i being equal to n i'm not go, good with technology up to n of x i's of x i's that are going to be squared and then negative two sequences no sequences what the hell sums from i equal to one up to n of x i z i and then plus this sum um, I'm, I'm making those sigma smaller and smaller yeah up to n of z i's that are squared Lovely, but now, well, we can cancel out some stuff on both hands side of this inequality because well, this sum of x i z squared is the same as this sum right here. We can just sub sub subtract it from both sides of this inequality. Well, this sum of y z squared is the same as this sum of squared z sense because even though the order in which those numbers appear is different, the overall sum does not care about order. It's going to be just the same on both hand sides. So all we are left with here is this sum and this sum. We can't really go on and subtract them from both hand sides. Actually, add them to both hand sides because they are negative on both hand sides of this inequality. Mm, because, well, even though y's are the same as z's, the order matters when we are first, uh, first multiplying them by some other constants and then adding them up together. So I'm going to be left with negative 2 multiplied by this sum from i being equal to 1 up to n of x i y i is supposed to be less than or equal to negative 2 sums from i being equal to 1 up to n of x i z i. But now we can just go on, divide everything by negative 2 and flip this inequality sign. So let's do it. We're going to get the sum of i from i being equal to 1 up to n of x i y i is greater than or equal to the sum from i equal to 1 up to n of x i z i. But this thing right here is literally the rearranging inequality because we know that z i's are, and now I, I really want to write delta here, uh, something like this. z i's are a permutation denoted by delta of y i's and so by the rearranged inequality this thing holds actually this is exactly the definition of the rearranged inequality written in terms of those two sequence or those three sequences x i's y i's and z i's and so this actually ends our proof and well i will used to be easy guys <laughs> <laughs> Good old times. <laughs> okay, guys, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short bit on the rearranged inequality. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new stuff I'm going to be posting in. I actually post every single day, so there's a lot of stuff to miss out on. And, well, if you did like it, I'm happy you're happy. And see you next one. Bye.